What's up guys? Welcome to this week's episode of Bourbon and Bass. First time watching? That's okay. My name's Derek Hudnall. I am just finished my second year on the Bassmaster Elite Series, so of course fishing is in my blood, but also I absolutely love bourbons. Um, I love the history behind them and I love bourbons that really tell a story. So I got a good one for you guys today. Today we are going to talk E.H. Taylor. And if you guys are bourbon lovers, you like bourbons, you like whiskeys, and you don't know who E.H. Taylor is, shame on you. E.H. Taylor is known as the founding father of modern day bourbon. Um, this was a man that was well ahead of his time, you know, back in the, the mid to late 18, 1800s. Um, you know, he bought his first distillery, uh, I believe it was 1869 in Louisville. He bought a distillery. 10 years later, he sold it to um, uh, George T. Stagg, which you guys probably know of and seen. And George T. Stagg was the man who kind of brought the things that E.H. Taylor did to the bourbon industry and then brought them into the modern age, and it's kept that way for years. Now, bourbon has been around way longer than that, but E.H. Taylor um, was a man well ahead of his time. You know, a lot of the methods that E.H. Taylor um, came up with and designed in the 1860s and 1870s is some of the methods that are still used today in the bourbons that you love and enjoy. So he is widely known as the founding father. And of course, Colonel E.H. Taylor, you know, he bought that distillery right after the Civil War. He was a colonel in the military. Um, he was also a banker. And so he had the funds and the means to really fund his, his hobby or his passion. And uh, he was just a man well ahead of his time. This right here is E.H. Taylor Small Batch. Of course, it's now known as the Buffalo Trace Distillery, which is the most award-winning distillery in the world by far. There is an absolute reason why those guys have won more awards than any other distillery um, in the world, simply because it, it started with the founding roots. It started with the father himself, E.H. Taylor, a man well ahead of his time, and, and you know, a lot of the methods from 160 years ago are still used today in the bourbons that you love and enjoy. E.H. Taylor, extremely hard to get, guys. This is a small batch. There's a few other ones, um, but these were recently released, so um, if you can find it, grab it. I mean, taste-wise, is incredible. Super well-balanced, um, very smooth, and this is one you absolutely want to drink neat. Um, don't spoil it with anything because it's worth every sip, every penny, if you can find it. If you find it retail, you're going to probably find it somewhere around 80 bucks if you can find it. I actually snagged this bottle. I was actually in Lake Chickamauga and stopped at a little hole-in-the-wall liquor store one day, and they had a bottle of it, so I grabbed it up. Um, so awesome stuff, guys. Great story. E.H. Taylor, the founding father of bourbon or modern-day bourbon as we know it. Um, do some research, research and history on this dude here because there's a lot that he did that... Uh, um, that really changed the way bourbon tastes today. Incredible, incredible find for sure. All right, the bass portion today, by popular demand, and I teased this a little bit last week if anybody was paying attention. Um, if you guys have been following me for several years now, y'all know I used to do a series of Facebook Lives called Build Your Brand. And what Build Your Brand did is I try to help up and coming anglers determine their value and then turn around and build their brand as an angler because you we get probably more questions about that than we than anything else is about how do you get sponsors you know how do you get people to give you money or how do you get people to help support you um, that's what build your brand was about and it had a lot of success then but i'm going to bring it back in a four-part series it's going to be four episodes um, and it's going to be youtube only so if you guys aren't on YouTube or you are on YouTube, get over there, subscribe to my YouTube page. You know, I really want it just there because I want somebody to go back and be able to easily find and watch all four all four episodes together so you can really um, get, a, a, get, a, get enough information, get all the information you can. It's gonna be very easy to find right there on my YouTube page. But a four part series um, that I'm gonna put for Build Your Brand. And so I'll kind of give you a little sneak peek at it. And there's a reason why I break it down into four different episodes because there's certain sections that you really need to concentrate on and you can't have one without the other. Um, the number one rule, and if you guys have been following me for a while now, you know this um, never call them a sponsor. You know, they're 100%, they're it is a partner. It is a partnership. It's on all my professional stuff, and every time I mention them, I always call them a partner because there is a big difference between a partnership 
and a sponsorship. If you treat them as a sponsor, if you think of them, of them as a sponsor, that's exactly what you're gonna, you're gonna get because you gotta look at it in a business mind, from a business person's perspective. A sponsor to them meaning handouts. They get calls and people walk in all the time. Hey, can you sponsor us for this? Hey, can you sponsor us for this? You're not that guy. We are not that guy that just walks in and say, hey, can you sponsor me for fishing next year? No, it's, hey, I'm looking to partner with a company that I can show value to you for whatever you guys come up with. And everyone's gonna be different. So remember, forget the word sponsor and start concentrating on the word partnership because partnership, a, par a true partnership is gonna show value from both ends. So with that being said, um, you cannot determine your value until you determine what your needs are. Number one goal, determine your needs. If you're fishing, a BFL next year, if you're going to fish the Bassmaster Opens next year, if you're just going to fish a local tournament trail, whatever, you know, whatever it is that you're fishing, that's where you need to start in determining your value. And you say, hey, it's going to cost me $4,000 next year to, to fish. You know, how can I get people to partnership, to, to partner up with me um, to help the help with the financial part, because that's very key. And especially if you're trying to make it to the Bassmaster Elite Series, if you don't have that already coming into it, um, um, it it's going to be very difficult, you know, financially to, to, to take that leap. So let's just say it costs $4,000. $4,000. Okay, how can I split that up? You know, I don't have, I, you know, eight or nine partners is about all I want to have because I want to be able to dedicate time to each one of them you know, uh, to be able to show value that way. I don't want, I'm not going to be one of those guys that have 35 or 40 stickers all over their wrap or jersey. Um, so, you know, you break it down into, hey, my, my title partner is going to be $2,000. Okay, $2,000 is a lot of money, guys. Um, and then you have to determine, you know, what type of value you're going to show in exchange for that $2,000. And it could be, everybody's going to be different. You could walk into Joe Blow's Tire Care Center on the corner and, and say, hey, I'll hand out 500 of your business cards that give people 5% off or a free oil change or, you know, in exchange for that. And, you know, you hand out 500 of them and if they get 10 or 15 of them back and they are, they got, you know, they went there specifically because of your business card that you handed out, maybe that's worth two grand to them. Again, that's something that you have to determine. Um, if you don't have a very big social media following, it's going to be grassroots. It is going to be boots on the ground. It is going to be you working for them, whether it's you know marketing for them somehow, handing out flyers or whatever you need to do to show, hey, at the end of the year, say, hey, you know, I worked my butt off and he needs, you know, that, that potential business needs to be able to see that. It all, and then you break up, say you break up, hey, I'm gonna have eight more spots, I'm gonna have, Three of them at $500 and the rest of them are just going to be like $200 spots. And you, you kind of build it that way to say, okay, this is where my $4,000 is going to come from. And you got to start somewhere and then try to build value there. And, you know, in social media is such a big part. You know, I've had guys reach out and say, hey, man, I don't understand why nobody will let me be on their pro staff. Because, man, I have 500 followers now and 500 followers aren't, isn't, isn't anything um, that ain't much. That's nothing. Um, you know, me collectively, I don't have, but about, I only have about 20,000 followers collectively between all of them. Um, but I have a very engaged audience. I do it the right way. Do not pay Instagram, Facebook, YouTube to try to just get followers because it's going to be the wrong followers. It's not the followers that you want. And I'm probably mid pack or so, um, as far as the other guys on the elite series. Um, but I do it right. And I do it by putting out content that you guys love and consistent content. You know, one big key on social media, they're saying, what do I put on there? Number one, don't share. Un unless it's something that's required by a partner, don't share a feed, don't share a post because sharing a post that's not ornate, that, that a video that's not done by you isn't gonna reach very many people at all. Put, you know, take something, make it your own, put your own words behind it. And uh, some of my highest performing videos out there, most views are just something simple like, this is how I tie a knot. This is how I rig an Ike mini flip. This is how, this is my, my, my favorite rod selection for this particular, um, for this particular lure or presentation. Those are the kind that are going to perform the best. People wanna see you. You need to show them who you are 
as a person, educate people, this is who I am, and then they'll follow you. You know, there's some of the best in the industry or like a John Cruz. John Cruz doesn't have this huge, big personality out there, but John Cruz works his butt off. He puts out a lot of informational and educational video and content um, f to help you guys. You know, somebody like a Gerald Swindle, He's one of the biggest followings in our industry, and it's but he has that huge personality that everybody loves. And so everybody is different. I don't have one of those big personalities, but I try to key on putting out information that you guys are gonna like and, and something that's gonna help you guys. So that's just kind of a shortened version of the four-part series that's coming up. Build Your Brand is back. It's gonna, it's gonna start dropping next week, YouTube only, because the only reason I'm doing YouTube only is because it needs to be, I want you guys to be able to find it very, very easily. It's gonna start back next week. Make sure you go subscribe to my page. Be looking for it. E.H. Taylor, the founder of the Modern Day Bourbons, guys. This is a great one, great story behind it. Build Your Brand is back. See you guys next time. Thanks for watching. I can't wait to get Build Your Brand started, but Bourbon and Bass is not going anywhere. We're still doing this every week as always. Thanks guys for watching. See you guys next time. Cheers.